Hey everyone, this is Shea Walker from All Garage Floors and today we're going to talk about cleaning Swiss Tracks garage floor tiles. Now this method that we're going to show you can be used on any other manufacturer's interlocking plastic garage floor tiles. In fact, we had a race deck floor for eight years in our older home and this is the same method that we use to keep that flooring looking great for all those years. Now this particular floor has an interesting backstory to it in terms of cleaning, which I'll tell you about in just a moment. But if you can do us a favor, why don't you hit that subscribe button down below so we can update you with new videos as they become available. And let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to clean the Swiss Tracks garage floor tile. You'll see from start to finish how it's done. This isn't gonna be a long video. I'm gonna speed up a lot of it and skip through some parts, but you'll definitely get the idea. Now I did mention in the beginning that there is a little bit of a unique backstory to this floor in terms of cleaning. And that is, that it's never been cleaned. We purposely did not clean the floor for the first six months after we installed it because we wanted to demonstrate how well this floor performs in terms of looking clean all the time. So we shot that video and I even mentioned during that video that I couldn't wait to clean it afterwards. Well, long story short, this is three months or so later and I'm finally getting around to cleaning the floor. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how much dirt we actually get off of this. So let's talk about what we do to actually clean the floor. The first thing I like to do is I get out the shop vac and I will vacuum it first. And I like to use this attachment right here that has the brush on it. And the reason I like to use this is because if there's any caked on dirt or anything like that, it helps to loosen it up. In our case with the Rib Tracks Pro tile that we have here, the, the ribs have kind of a rounded edge on them. And if I use a different type of attachment, it's just gonna catch the top of it. This actually acts like a broom while it's vacuuming at the same time. We also have a small section of the Rib Tracks Smooth Pro. And uh, even though it's smooth, this still works extremely well. So we're gonna vacuum the floor first. After we vacuum it, we're gonna clean it with a solution of ammonia and water. And the type of product I like to use is this one here by Parsons. We've been using this for years. We used it on a race deck floor. I use it in the house. It works extremely well. And I'll be dropping a link to this as well as a couple other items that we use also. Now the solution that I mix up is generally a quarter cup of the ammonia to one gallon of hot water. The next item that I like to use is this professional style of mop. We love this thing. I'm gonna have a link down below for you. It's all aluminum. This one I think is about nine years old. Uh, it extends and it comes with a couple of these microfiber pads like this one here. In fact, this one's still damp from what something I did earlier today. And we use a bucket right here. But this, this we highly recommend. Now this is the 18 inch version. I like the 18 inch version because you can apply some pressure to it to scrub. They make a 24 inch wide version. And, but that one, if you go to put pressure to it, it doesn't scrub as well. So I found the 18 inch is the best compromise right here. Also use gloves when I'm working with the ammonia because I'm going to be rinsing as I go. And then the other thing I like to use, and I usually do this afterwards, is this is just a mixture of Simple Green and I use a towel and this is for spot cleaning. And you, you know, depending on how busy your garage is, um, you're going to have to spot clean occasionally. I found with this tile, whether it's this or any other tile, that occasionally you're going to get some areas where maybe you had an oil spill or something else 
uh, you walked on something, grounded in a little bit, and using that simple green generally will clean it up. Another tip is to use a, uh, a soft scrub type pad. Hit it with a simple green and then you can scrub it and that'll generally pull up stuff as well. That's something that's very nice about this flooring is that it is very hard to stain. Now I have other videos I've been putting together of different work that we've done on cars since we've had this floor in here. So keep that in mind. We've done oil changes. Um, I did some adjustments on our track car with the suspension. We've rotated tires and so on. So this is some of the stuff that we've put the floor through. So let me go ahead. I'm going to get started with this. It will only take a few minutes for you to see the whole process and then we'll talk about it afterwards. So this floor doesn't look that dirty, but it is filthy. I get down here and rub my hands on here. Oh, there you go. Um, it's filthy, so this is why we're cleaning the floor. <laughs> Can't wait to get this done. Okay, so the floor is all dry. I started looking over some areas really close to see if I can find anything that might need more cleaning. And as, as close as I can here, you see these spots right there. I'm gonna hit those with a little bit of simple green. Yeah, and that came right up. So the mop's not going to get every single thing, but that's what the simple green's for. Or, you know, whatever your favorite cleaner is, but I've always used simple green on plastic. It's worked great on my motorcycles, and I've gotten back from being out in the mud. Here's some more right here. So, whatever you like, There we go, cleaned it right up. So that's the key right here, 
If you have any spot cleaning, just use some simple green or something similar to go ahead and uh, hit it. Oh, here's another one right here. There you go. And we're good. And you can see it's, it's, it's hard for me to even find spots that are dirty. Part of the reason is because they're camouflaged. Um, the other reason is this tile just doesn't get very dirty or dirty looking. Here we go. I think this is the tile I ran my hand over before. And you can see it's nice and clean. So... That's how well the Parsons ammonia and water work at getting all your general cleanup. And like I said, it's not gonna get the real hard stuff. You'll need to use uh, something else. But that was it. I think it took us a total with the vacuuming and the mopping about 30 minutes. Now that didn't include the uh, taking the stuff out onto the driveway. We didn't have a whole lot. But we did, we took it out there and really happy with the way this turned out. Oh, and I forgot to show you, it showed you a picture of where one of the tires parked for the Mustang. And these are high performance tires. And they will tend to leave a mark on these light colored tiles. This is what it looks like after I hit it with the simple green. So you can still see a little bit there. This is just using a towel. I could probably get it more if I scrubbed it a little harder, but it's not a big deal to me because the car parks there. So I don't see it. The only time I see it is if I move the car. So it's nothing that bothers me. If you get something like this that you don't like, you get a tile that's damaged or stained in some way, you can just easily replace it. That's another thing that's so great about this, this flooring. And then the other thing I wanted to show you was how dirty all this is. So yeah, it was a filthy floor and that's the aftermath. Okay, so we're done cleaning the floor. <laughs> Feels good to clean it finally after nine months. We have just under 700 square feet of tile that's laid down here. I went back over the video feed. I spent just under 10 minutes with the vacuuming, just under 15 minutes with the mopping, and maybe another 10 minutes with the spot cleaning. So a little over 35 minutes and I was done. And the spot cleaning, that reminds me, one tip is if you have a tough area to clean up, a soft scrub pad works very well. I actually went back over the area that had the uh, tire footprint on it and did that with the simple green and it came out looking even cleaner. I'm showing you a picture of it right now so you get a better idea. Now from where I'm standing, I can't even tell where that area is. You have to walk over there and look for it to find it. Is it perfect? No, but no one's gonna be able to tell. Uh, overall, I'm extremely satisfied. In fact, I'm impressed with the quality of these Swiss Trax tiles, particularly in this area right here where we laid the pearl silver color in the Swiss Trax Rib Trax Smooth Pro. Um, that flat surface, uh, from our experience with the Race Deck Solid Top tiles, the flat surface is really going to collect a lot of dirt and you're going to see it more particularly in this workbench area and just this whole front area of the garage. We have foot traffic here all the time. We've had various projects here. And after we're done, I am looking at it and it looks new. If I get down on my hands and knees, yeah, I can find little spots that uh, can probably get cleaned up a little bit better, but I'm not gonna worry about it. It's a garage floor, it's not inside my house. So, it's just a testament to the quality of Swiss tracks. Now, some of you may be wondering, all right, this looks great for everything you're doing, but what if you live in a winter climate and you have snow and things like that? The rib tracks 
tile is actually very popular for people in snowy climates because when you bring your car in, the snow falls off and melts, it keeps the floor clean and dry. Uh, you don't have to worry about slip falls and things like that, but over a period of the winter, the floor does start looking kind of nasty after a while. When you go to clean up that mess, we recommend popping off a few of the front edge ramps for the door, bring your hose in and hose it all out. Uh, there's channels underneath, everything will go right out onto the driveway and then clean it the same way I just showed you. The only difference is, is use a deck brush instead of the mop and just dip your deck brush right into your ammonia solution and scrub the tiles that way. And then if you want, you can go and, and rinse it off, hose it off one more time, and they're gonna come out looking clean. Some people even like to disconnect the tiles in long sections. It's fairly easy to do. You can pull them out, and then that way you can really clean the concrete underneath if uh, that's a big concern of yours. So that's the other way you can clean these tiles. Now, if you've been watching this video because you're interested in Swiss Trax flooring, we actually have a discount code down below along with the link that you can use to save money on your purchase. We also have links to other videos with Swiss Trax we've done. We've shown how you properly install Swiss Trax flooring, as well as our video I mentioned where we purposely didn't clean it for six months so you could see what it looked like before and what it looked like afterwards. So hopefully we've answered a lot of the questions for you and that you've enjoyed this video. If you have any additional questions, hit the comment section down below. If you've seen any of our videos, we're very active with answering people's questions as well as people who go on our website. You can contact us direct that way. Hopefully you like this video and thanks for watching.